and welcome to Impact with Kenny Anderson. Each week we like to bring you information about things that are going on in the city and in the region. Through the Office of Multicultural Affairs, we support so many different things and have such a tremendous opportunity to experience all of the many resources that are part of our great community. Well, no different today as we introduce you to another guest in our studio and uh, share some great information. You know, we oftentimes talk about youth being our future. I like to say that youth are our present leading towards the future. And what we invest in our young people today matters more than anything in the world because it's what we invest in them today that will pay benefits in the future. I have some very special guests with me to talk about a youth initiative. The Media Arts Institute is a tremendous initiative, a nonprofit organization that provides opportunities for young people to experience the future now. And they do that in a very unique way. And I'm going to introduce you to a couple of guests. Leon and Marcia Burnett are the founders of the Media Arts Institute. And they recently launched an incredible initiative that I think is going to have a huge impact on the lives of a lot of young people, not just in this community and the region, but perhaps around the nation. The All Bama Sports Youth Network, a youth sports network, is a, a brand new initiative that's just been launched and uh, I'm very excited to say that not only was I part of a recent event announcing this for the community, but have had a chance to begin understanding the potential impact that this uh, particular operation will have on our city. But first of all, I want to say welcome to Leon and Marcia Burnett. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having it, us. It's great to have you guys. And I know you're real excited right now because I can hey. see the excitement in a recent press conference and <laughs> announcing this event. I saw the energy from the young people and I saw some tremendous support from the community. So I'm really honored to be able to share this information with our community in this way. Thank you. First of all, though, I think we need to talk about, before we talk about the more exciting thing right now about this youth network, is talk a little bit about Media Arts Institute and what it is. The Media Arts Institute is an organization that was put together to make sure that young people who are talented, who wanted to have careers in broadcast media, journalism, uh, all kinds of various digital media, had an opportunity to get their hands on it, experience it, and learn whether they had money or not. Mm. And you know something, when we talk about young people, I know you got a great passion for working with young people. We look at young people today sometimes, we talk about how we want them to dream, and we want them to not be limited by the things that they may see in their particular environment. And I can only imagine that a lot of what the Media Arts Institute brings to young people is a sense of hope, right. a sense of inspiration, yes. and a sense that anything that they dream can be possible. That's true, that's true. On track as far as that's concerned? You're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our kids today have so many dreams. A lot of times they don't know how to get, get those dreams, turn those dreams into reality. And so in the area of media, music, I decided that I wanted to focus on that. That was my experience. That's where I have my expertise and that's what I could offer young people it was a way to get the basic understanding of what it would take, get their hands dirty, so, so to speak, so they could learn how to make their dreams and their stories come true. Mm. And you, of course, had a very long career in the music industry. That's correct. Something that a lot of people like myself sit back and we kind of watch, we wonder, sometimes we admire, and we're part of perhaps through the participation of purchasing albums back in the day, of course, at CDs today and yeah. MP3s, yeah. Uh, but certainly uh, following certain artists and uh, going to concerts and things like that. And you were very well entrenched. You were not just the peripheral guy in this process. I mean, you were well connected in the yeah. industry. I, I grew up in Los Angeles, and I was fortunate that the, my very first band, I got a record deal with Quincy Jones for my very first band, which is the very first band. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. The Brothers Johnson. Mm -hmm. That was a group that I worked with. The father, the mother, the brothers. We worked together on the weekends. We would do parties. We would do proms. We would do debutantes. And doing that is when I really developed my passion for wanting to be in the music business. And so fortunately, through that relationship, I was able to get a mentoring opportunity with Quincy Jones, which just opened up my eyes to everything about 
music. I didn't quite know what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to be in the music business. So working with him gave me some direction. Mm. We started the Quincy Jones Workshop where he would bring in various people from various industries every week to tell us about what they did. And there were people like Richard Pryor and Billy Eckstein and then people behind the scenes like Mr. Pete Long who ran the Apollo Theater who would come in and tell us about their jobs and what it took for them to get to where they were at. And so through that, I was able to build relationships in the industry went on to work for Motown Records in Chicago, and then went on to work real closely with the Commodores and Rick James. And then I started my own management company, me and some friends from Ohio. So I moved to Ohio, and we became some, I guess, uh, some of the people that put that whole Ohio music scene on the map. <laughs> and I remember it well. Yeah, and I'm, I'm from West Coast. I'm a West Coast <laughs> guy, but you talk about Ohio music, that's my roots. Oh man, and you some know, serious bands yeah, that came out Yeah, working with the, the Ohio players, working with Roger Troutman, uh, and then we started our own management company where we had Midnight Star, mm. The Deal, L.A. Reed, Babyface, mm. and it was a community of individuals in Dayton, Cincinnati, uh, Columbus, you know, from the Isley Brothers to the OJs. I mean, I, I could go on and on. Yeah. And that became my life mm. for like 25 years of working with these artists, putting them on tour, developing their projects from ground to, you know, to the concert halls. Mm -hmm. You know, developing the concepts, developing the artwork, developing the tours, developing the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. uh, work with Rick James. Mm -hmm. That gave me some another insight into the music business. <laughs> and uh, so those things let me know that if I could mm. achieve my dreams being from South Central LA and actually being a church boy mm. who really did not know mm. what to do but knew I wanted to be in it, mm. that anybody could do it mm. if you put your mind on it. But if you found somebody who cared about you enough to put you on the right path and give you the opportunity, I worked a lot of days for Free Kenny. Mm, mm. It wasn't about the money, it was about being in the industry and getting my hands wet. So I worked in every area of the music business from radio to distribution, to marketing, to touring, and you know, on and on. And you know, with your passion for working with young people now too, on the other side of this experience, you've seen so many things, and you've had so many experiences, and you've learned so many things about the highs and the lows of the industry. I'm sure these are things you uh, are eager to share with young people today who are looking at it from the outside saying, I want to be that. I want to be a part of that thing. And there are things that you've probably experienced and learned that, that you're now able to say, well, here's what I know and, and here's what I think you need to understand about this interest, this desire that you may have to be a part of that industry. And I know that as we see certain um, careers, uh, again, from the outside, we see these things as, as the as the public. We see careers come and go and you see the ups and downs. Uh, you know, most recently, I know uh, uh, it's a situation that you probably were pretty close to uh, the, uh, the TLC movie. <laughs> I, I, I must admit that I was probably very instrumental in that situation mm. because Pebbles was an earlier she was an artist that I had that I introduced her to L.A. Reid and wow. put them together. Wow. Baby, baby, and if you look, go back and you listen to her very first record, Girlfriend, you hear her say, Deal Sang, that was my group. Mm. So we produced her record. So wow. I know that situation all too well. <laughs> that would be another well. show, perhaps. That's a whole <laughs> another show on TMZ or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole other... But it's a, it's a messy business at times, and it's a tricky business at times, mm -hmm. and, and it's a business that provides people with a lot of opportunity at the same time. And I know a lot of your movement now and your direction now towards working with young people is to help them pursue their dreams, but do it in responsible ways, mm -hmm. do it in informed ways, do it in ways that um, honor the fact that this is a business that should be respected in terms of the talent or the gift that the person may have and that as people begin to try to explore and understand what they want to do in life, that they have a responsibility to do something for themselves, mm -hmm. to make that commitment. You know, you can't become successful if you don't want to study. Right. You can't be successful if you just want to hang out all the time. And uh, you have to be uh, careful about Absolutely. your selection of friends. I'm sure a lot of these themes and messages 
go along with the work that you do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, entertainment entrepreneurship is a very important part of all of our programs, teaching young people the basics, teaching them about legal representation, how to learn it for yourself, how to know what to do, and to really rely on yourself and not anybody else. You know, no. don't rely on somebody else to tell you what to do or to tell you what's right or what's wrong. Learn Where your money yourself. is. Exactly. You know, you know yeah. so those are things that I try to instill, but I try to instill a good work ethic, mm -hmm. you know, so that the work ethic they gain now as they go through their careers, they're able to maintain it, mm -hmm. you know. And I've, I'm fortunate that I've had a lot of young people through the years that I've mentored who are doing very well yeah. at various networks, doing various things. And so it's for me, it's all about the basics, understanding and having the passion and being willing to put the grind in, you yeah. know, just, yeah. you know, have a reason for why you do what you do. That's so, right. That's right. Yeah. And Marcia, you, of course, uh, recently retired. Congratulations on that, even though it's been a little while now, but still probably pretty fresh in some ways. Uh, and now you've transitioned <laughs> from working with young people in the academic arena to working with people who are in academic arenas in different kinds of ways. And I'm sure your passion also is driven by a love for young people. Absolutely. You worked for years with the UNCF and making those opportunities possible. Talk about why this whole initiative works for you. Well, it's a it was the, the transition was coming from, like you said, academia. But if you remember, Kenny, I used to be director of uh, career services. So I was always trying to motivate and encourage our students to, to go to the top, to make something of themselves. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. And so when we, when Mr. B, as they like to call him, <laughs> <laughs> came uh, up with this concept. It was just a natural part of me to, I love these students. They're like my children. They're like my children. And I, when I, we were taking our pictures today, I was trying to grab all of them and <laughs> hold on to them. But um, the mission, our mission with the media arts is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is to inspire creativity, to build capacity, and to promote success. And that's my... Um, philosophy even when I was working with the edu in the education department um, and that was just one area of course I ended up working with uh, the adult and continuing education mm -hmm. program LEAP and uh, we were inspiring and encouraging adults mm -hmm. at that time my philosophy is do whatever you want to do don't let anybody discourage you if you fall down the only way you can get uh, is to go get up look up mm -hmm and get up and, and next, keep moving. And that's what I like to teach them, you know, is to think positive and, and go for whatever you believe you, you can do. And uh, I, I like to inspire them and encourage them and love them. Oh, and they need a lot of that. <laughs> yes, and you know, yes, they do. People work their whole lives and they get to this point in life where they decide, we're gonna retire, you know, whatever that means. And then they begin thinking about the rest of their life mm -hmm. and what will they do? And perhaps in some cases, as you all have thought, mm -hmm. how will I give back? Oh, yeah. um, this Media Arts Institute concept came together and now lives as a husband and wife team working together on behalf of making young people's lives better. Um, how does someone listening tonight is maybe in that same zone and they're thinking, you know, I'm making some contributions to my job and I'm um, looking around at these needs in the community as well. And I, I want to be a part of something. Of course, you would welcome that for yourself. But what about somebody who's just maybe looking for that next thing to do? How did you all decide that this would be the one for you, the thing that you would pour your heart and soul into, perhaps for the rest of your lives? Well, for me, I, I looked at all the things I had done in my off time when I wasn't on the road, wasn't traveling, and I always found myself mentoring in the community, working with kids. I worked in a drop-out prevention program in Columbus, Ohio. I worked with a company in California called Cross Colors, and we would go out into the community and we would work with kids, trying to give them hope, trying to find out what their passions were. For me, I've seen everything go from analog to digital. 
So I was able to kind of give some of the young people a heads up on where the trends were going and, and encourage them to study certain things. So it was a natural progression for me because I have sons, I have grandkids, and my children, my boys, are a very big part of my success today and what I'm doing. Without my sons, you know, being able to work with me in this because I'm not going to be able to do this forever. I really want them to be able to carry on the mantle because it's something natural for them. Mm. They're very artistic. Mm. They're very business minded. And I see how they progress with me giving them the opportunity mm. to start shooting video at an early age and seeing what they can do. Mm. My sons were like self-taught. <laughs> I gave them a camera and said, go for it. Right. And they would go out and they would come back with all kinds of things. So I know that young people can, 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 can can succeed. One of the things I wanted to mention, one of the things that Quincy told me very early in the game, he says, look, if you're passionate about something, don't ever give up. Mm. Don't ever stop. That's because as soon as you stop, your next break could have been around the corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing in life, just keep at it. Yeah. But make sure that you're prayerful about it and you do your homework. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do important. your homework. Very important to yeah. do your homework. Yeah. Because somebody probably has tried something similar or have left some insight that you can now pick up and actually perhaps shorten the distance between the mistakes that somebody else made and your essential goal. Yeah, I, I think it's important to have a mentor. I have a number of uh, organizations around the company that are doing something similar to what I'm doing. Other CEOs, people I work with, and we talk. And they give me ideas. I give them ideas. They tell me what works, what doesn't work. How does it work in the community? Mm. But we all have our own challenges, mm. you know. But do your homework. Yeah. Make sure it's from your heart, yes. you know, yes. what you're doing. So that even when it gets rough, yeah. you know that it's still your passion and still your mission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the concept of mentoring. And, of course, this is what has led to the launch of the Alabama Youth Sports Network. Mm -hmm. Correct. And this is, uh, I think, the next generation in terms of the work that you're doing through the Media Arts Institute, because this now takes that whole concept of what you just defined as having somebody who has experienced it, whatever the it is, giving back yes. now to a group of young people who have a desire to do a similar kind of thing. Now talk about the launch of this and what this means to you and the organization. Well, the launch of this is really important for me. Uh, at, the, at its core, the Alabama Youth Sports Network is a mentoring program and a service learning program. Just to quickly tell you, we have brought college communication majors together with high school students who have had the same desires as these high school students but are at the next level and know a little bit more and have encouraged them to give back to these high school students and tell these students what they need to do to prepare for college. Good. That's At the same stuff. time, I can mentor the college students and I can mentor the high school students. Mm. So this launch is very uh, important for us because not, it's not just about sports. Mm. It's about young people learning uh, how to uh, be self-sufficient, how to learn really good job skills. And our desire is to have students all over Alabama join our network. Mm. Join, if you want to be a reporter, we will work with you. We will work with your school to help you learn some of the basics and give you an opportunity to become a part of our network. We, we have so many layers to this <laughs> onion, you know, yeah. but our, our, our goal is to help any student in Alabama that wants to get into these fields have the opportunity to have hands-on experience doing it. Yeah. And we found out that sports and music are their passions. Mm, yeah. I could talk to them about robotics. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about robotics, mm -hmm. so I can't talk to them about that, but I find so many kids want to be in the music industry, want to be in the video industry. We're driven by media. And so that became our hook to get young people to understand um, certain key STEM principles. STEM, yes. We focus on science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. So even if they don't like those things, when we start talking about sound waves and apertures and, and mm -hmm. various things, they starting to see, like, oh. you know, how it relates. When I talk to them about music and I say, look here, you don't, you, you fail math, 
You need to be getting A's in math. You need to understand your algebra. You got to understand how to make beats. Mm. You got to understand mm. rhythm. Mm. And so they start relating it. I, I don't. I relate dollars and cents to them. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. uh, what it takes. If you want to be a rapper, you need to learn your vocabulary words. Mm -hmm. You need mm -hmm. to know your English. Mm -hmm. You need to know how to write a sentence. Mm -hmm. You know. So. So you're making it very practical and very applied mm -hmm. and. And basically speaking to whatever the person's passion is. Yeah. Yes. And uh, not dismissing it, which some people are quick to do. Mm -hmm. To say, oh, no, no, you need to go ahead and do this. Like you said, you need to focus on being an engineer. Now, if a young person says, I want to do whatever the thing is they're saying they want to do. I want to be in sports, but I don't want to necessarily play. But I want to be one of those reporters on the sideline or a video guy, mm -hmm. you know. And it's interesting. Um, I, I, when you're at home watching a game, it's a whole nother experience than when you're actually at a stadium. Right. And you see so much more. I remember the first time I went to a professional sports game and I started looking around and realized, you know, there are more people out here making this happen than the players on the field. You know, it's like there are people <laughs> right. everywhere right. Yeah. who came in a week or two before time right. that know what they have to do to make this thing happen. And to pull this off, it takes hundreds of other people doing hundreds of other things in order to be successful. And what you're doing, I think, is in a big part helping expand their understanding of what the world really is like. Yeah, yes. and it's not all glamour. You know, I, I worked for the 1984 Olympics. I was on opening and closing ceremonies working for David Wolper. And it took us six months to plan mm. the opening mm -hmm. ceremonies. Wow. And then we had to squeeze three weeks into doing the closing ceremonies. Mm. And we had to rehearse after the lights went out at the stadium. Mm. We lived in a swim stadium at the LA Coliseum. Mm. It's 24 seven. So you have to understand and, 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 and know work ethic. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think- You can't be like, I, I'm tired, right. I'm tired, you know. <laughs> I no. wanna go home. No, and no, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, and you're making such a great point. I think that's something that we really need to help our young people understand today. It's all about the work ethic. It's mm -hmm. not about yes. so much your, your GPA. I mean, that's important. It's not so much about the, great, the course that you can get an A in. It's how much do you really want it? Mm -hmm. How bad do you want to make the commitment? Or how much do you want to make the commitment to do the thing that you want so badly? Mm -hmm. And when we can help young people understand that you don't give up on the thing that you really want, that you have to work for it, that there's an investment involved in that process, then you help them understand exactly what it might take in order to get to that next level. And I think you definitely are on the way to making that happen through the Alabama Youth Sports Network. Um, we've got just a few minutes left in the program, but uh, you obviously want everybody to know about this. You want people to log onto your website. You want people to be connected in interactive ways. You want people to be supportive through volunteer opportunities. Talk to folk about how those things can happen. And then, of course, you want to give them a website and a phone number okay. to be able to connect with you as well. Well, for young people and students who are interested, we would love for them to contact us so we could talk about how Alabama can be a part of their schedule and their after-school activities. We want to be a supplement to a lot of the things that they're learning in school. For parents, we want to give you information on how to deal with sports, health, injuries, get all the kinds of things that you like. For the general consumer, we want to give you information that makes you laugh, makes you think. There's so much that sports relates to in life, you know. Uh, I go to a lot of Pee Wee games, and I see the families with the cameras and stuff. <laughs> so we want young people and families and parents to share their sports clips, their videos, They'll so that they can share. That. Yeah, <laughs> it's not all about YouTube. We are an aggregator, yeah. and we produce original content. Mm. So we want this to be a community organization. We want to better s disseminate sports information around the state of Alabama. You know, we're passionate about youth sports here. We don't have a pro team. It's all about amateur sports mm. in Alabama. Yeah. How can I know what's going on with kids down at Spanish Fort, down at other places? How can they know about what's going on here? Mm. We want to share that information. It's information sharing. Yeah. And we want to be able to honor and, and pay tribute to a lot of these student athletes, the 99% mm. who don't get recognized through D1 scholarships. Mm. So we want this to be a community. We want people to come to albamasports.com mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know what? I want to entertain myself. I'm going to go look at some funny video clips. Oh, I want to find a 
out more about concussion injuries. Mm. I want to find out more about how to tape up little Johnny's leg because he sprang it mm. in basketball practice. Mm -hmm. I want to know what I should feed my kid before a game. Mm. Real helpful tips yeah, yeah. and information. Yes. Yeah, and how to be a leader. We're, yeah. we're, we're talking to key people in sports who are leaders, mm -hmm. your, your big coaches. And we asked, our students asked them, what does it take to become a leader? Mm. What does it take to become successful? Mm -hmm. So this is our way of getting our young people to find that information and share it with their friends and family, yeah. but also enjoy what they're doing and have fun with it. Yeah. And Marcia, you just want everybody to know about this as well. Um, oh, yeah. As you go around the community talking with folks, uh, yeah. I know it's important for you to share uh, what's happening and uh, your personal commitment, but also for people to get involved. Yes, absolutely, um, because I believe in encouraging and motivating our young people. That's very important to me, and I know that there are people out there. Um, I, I like to especially see our, our young women. We have a young woman in our program who almost every other week she'll tell us that she's not going to do this or she's not going to do this. And we told, I told her just today, you are going to be a part of this program whether you want to or not. And she's been hanging in there with us for the whole summer, hasn't she? I told her she's and my star. She's, yes. And so we, <laughs> she always shows up. We, she yeah. always shows up, you know. But she needs that reinforcement. You know, now, uh -huh. and I know we just have a, f a few minutes left, mm -hmm. maybe two or three, but I want to get this in real quick, just 30 seconds maybe, but what you said was probably one of the most important things that you said in this whole show as it relates to working with our young people because we cannot give up on them. No. No. They may give up on themselves and they may express certain doubts and reservations about things, mm -hmm. but when we see them come to the table, mm -hmm. we need to continue to encourage them yes. and motivate them yes. to move forward. And you yes. hit the nail on the head when you just said that. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we believe that all kids can be successful and we are determined not to let them fail. Mm -mm. You know, we talk to them, we encourage them. I see them when they're like, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Yeah. Let's find something else for you to do, but mm -hmm. you're not going to stop. Yeah. And I see the biggest smile on her face oh, and other yes. faces. And I have a lot of girls in my program. Yeah. I have a lot of girls yeah. who love sports. Mm -hmm. And so our whole thing is to be encouraging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be, for me, I'm the father figure, so I'm going to have. Mm. You know, I'll be honest with Which you. Which is absolutely, yeah, I'm yeah. certain of that. You know, yeah. and so I can talk to them straight, the guys, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm from the hood. Yeah. I can talk to them. They know they can relate to me. I talk to them about things they probably can't talk to with their mothers. Because mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. fathers aren't there. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of kids whose, you know, parents are not together. Right. So... I believe success is available to anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. Yeah. And we've got to keep believing that yes. in order to keep inspiring our young people to experience success mm -hmm. in life. We can never give up on them. No. 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 Uh, no. Even when they've stumbled and when they've fallen and when they've rejected Reach us, out we your cannot hand and give up on right. them. Yeah. And that's so important. Mm. Um, tell people again. All Alabama. Uh, all Alabama, Bama, Bama sports. A L L B A M A. All Bama sports. Sports. All right. All Bama sports. All day. All ages. All right. All Bama. All Bama. It's allbamasports.com. You want to definitely check it out. It's been a pleasure being with you. I'm Kenny Anderson with Impact with Kenny Anderson. You can check us out each week. Leanna Marcia Burnett, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Really appreciate right. it, Kenny. And best wishes. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. I never had a